Hey guys, my name is Yvette and welcome to my DIY channel and I hope that you guys are having a great day. So today's video is an accumulation of 10 air dry clay projects that I've done on my channel in the past. So let's just get started. Okay guys, since we're using air dry clay to make our planters, you're gonna wanna get a container like this. It could be made out of glass, plastic, or metal and I got this one from Dollar Tree. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of clay and flatten it out between my fingers and then I'm gonna press it against the glass and mush it in. And that's basically what I'm gonna do to cover this container. And I'm using Daz clay because this clay won't crack once it dries up against the glass. Also guys, don't worry about this being super neat because we're gonna fix it. Okay guys, so once your container is fully covered, you should be looking something like this. Taking some water on my fingers, I'm just gonna blend this all out to smooth everything. You can just use your fingers or you can also use a sponge that's meant for clay and you could also even use a scraper tool. Alright guys, so this is as neat as I've gotten it so far and it's pretty good. I don't really care about making it super perfect because I can still sand this once it's dry. So now I'm going to move on to the face. So taking a little bit of clay, I'm going to make the nose and I'm going to shape this clay into a long rectangle and I'm going to round out the edges a little bit. And then here, I'm just going to press it into the clay and there we go, we have our nose. Grabbing a little bit more clay, I'm going to roll out two little dots and add them as the eyes. And then now I'm just going to roll out a little line for the mouth. And that's pretty much it. We have our planter. I'm just gonna keep this really simple. So now I'm just gonna let this dry for about two days. Soon after. Okay guys, so here's our planter now that it's dry and I'm gonna sand it down just a little bit. I sketched out an upside down arch shape because I wanted to paint the face a different color than the rest of the body. And so now I'm gonna paint. Here I covered the face because I wanted to speckle the rest of it. I'm going to seal this with Deco Arch Triple Thick Gloss Glaze. Okay guys, so for this line face trinket dish, I'm going to be using this outline here that I bought in this pack of boho art prints on Etsy. I'll make sure to link this down in the description box for you guys. Anyways, I traced it out onto this piece of paper and then I sketched out like an ovalish, squarish circle outside of it. And yeah, this is going to be our stencil. And then I also made the eye closed. So roll out your clay and then trace out your stencil. Before you lift off your paper, make sure to trace out the little face.
And then you can see the face here, and this is gonna help guide us for when we attach the face to the trinket dish. Using a dotting tool, I'm just gonna trace out the face a little bit better so I can see it better, and this step is totally optional. Here, I'm blending out the edges with some water. Taking some more clay, I'm gonna roll out a really long coil. I'm adding more water to my clay to make it tacky, and then I'm gonna take my coil and I'm gonna add the face. I'm gonna take some more clay and roll it out and then I'm gonna cut out this long line that you guys see me tracing out and this is gonna be for the border of our trinket dish. Once again, I'm adding more water to my clay to make it tacky and then I'm just gonna attach the border. And then I attached another strip to complete the trinket dish. Blend out anything else if you need to and then let this dry for a few days. 8.01 p.m. Here's our trinket dish now that it's dry and I'm gonna sand a little bit of the border. And then you can paint this however you'd like. Right here, I decided to speckle the dish. Taking some paint on my finger, I'm gonna go over the top of the face. And then I decided to do the same thing on the top of the border. The last thing I'm gonna do is seal this with Deco Arts Matte Varnish and we're done. We're going to be making a wall hanging so you're going to want to trace out three circles and make one that's small, one medium, and one large and I just used a teacup and two different plate sizes to do this. For the small and medium circle fold them in half and then add these little dots that I'm adding because these are going to be our guide for the holes we're going to poke into these so that we can tie them together. For the large one, fold this one into fourths because this is going to help us find the middle spot. And then also draw a line down the middle because for this large one, we're also going to be using it as a half circle. And then also don't forget to draw these little dots that I am for the holes. And this is how our half circle is going to look like. Roll out your clay and trace out your small circle. Don't forget to poke the little holes onto your clay before you remove the paper. Make sure to make your holes big enough to where you can put some jute cord through it and blend out any rough edges with some water. Trace out your medium circle, and my clay looks kind of weird just because I blended two clays together. They're the same brand, but I just ran out of the terracotta color, and so I mixed it in with some white. Next, take your large circle, fold it in half, and trace out your half circle.
Lastly, trace out your large circle. Make sure to poke a hole in the middle and then two on the ends for where we're gonna hang these from. Take your medium paper circle and poke a hole in the middle of it and connect this to the hole that you poked in the middle of your large clay circle. And now the medium paper circle should be in the middle of the large clay circle, if that makes sense. And now trace out the medium circle and sorry this went blurry. I ended up adding 11 holes to the bottom of this circle because I want to hang some macrame cord from these holes. Also, if you lift up your clay, make sure to be very careful because you could lose this perfectly circular shape. So for me, I'm going to let this dry on here for a few hours before I lift it. And this is silicone, so it'll be really easy to peel off. So make sure if you do this, make sure you're working on somewhere where you can let the clay harden for a little bit. One minute, 37 seconds later. Here are my shapes dry and on screen you guys can see two medium sized circles and I was going to use two medium ones but then I decided the hanging looked better without one of them so ignore it. Anyways, I'm going to sand them. I'm going to paint them a terracotta clay color. To seal these, I'm trying out Deco Arts Matte Varnish to see if I like this better than Mod Podge. Next, I'm going to take some macrame cord to loop onto my holes using the Lark's head knot. The middle circle's cord was 16 inches long, and then I took an inch off every hole up, so it was 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11. And so now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You can leave the macrame cord like this, but I'm going to comb it out. The last thing we gotta do is tie this all together and you can tie this however you'd like. And I'm just gonna use one really long piece of juke cord to do this.
Okay guys, so for our next air dry clay project, we're gonna be making a key holder using this stencil. And I did not draw this myself. I bought this body outline from an Etsy shop. All I did was finish the top of her head because I wanted to add in hair. And then I sketched in some kindergarten looking flowers all over her body. I'll link the Etsy shop that I got her body outline from for you guys down in the description box. So roll out your clay and then lay your stencil on top and then trace her out. Before you take off the stencil, remember to trace out all the little details that you drew on her body. And now fully cut her out. Using my needle tool, I'm just going to deepen all the little details we had already traced out. Make sure to smooth out any bumps with water. So now I'm gonna take some of these little hooks and I'm gonna stick them in on the bottom of her leg. This is how she's looking like after I stuck in the hooks and I just pushed them into the clay and now I'm gonna let her dry for a couple of days. 20 minutes later. So here she is dry. The hooks do indent backwards a little bit, so I need to make her thicker so that she doesn't stick awkwardly out of the wall when I hang her. So to make her thicker, I traced out her body shape on a thick piece of foam paper, and I'm just gonna glue the clay version of her on top of the foam version like this, and then that takes care of that problem. Now I'm gonna sand her a little bit. So this little line down the middle bugs me and in order to fix this, you could add in like a small amount of clay on top but I don't want to wait for it to dry so I'm actually going to use some of these plaster strips that I have and I'm just going to stick them all along her side to get rid of that line and these plaster strips dry within three minutes so it's a really quick fix. And then here's how she looks after I covered all of her side with the plaster strips. Now you can paint her and you can paint her however you'd like.
The last thing we're gonna do is seal her and once again, I'm gonna use Deco Arts Triple Thick Gloss Glaze. air dry clay project we're gonna start out with the vase and I'm gonna be using Daz air dry clay for this you're also gonna to want to grab something that can be in the shape of a vase so I'm gonna be using this cleaning wipes container but you can also use like a tall water bottle or like an actual vase and this is gonna give us our vase shape also I made sure to wrap this in plastic wrap so that my clay doesn't stick to it when it dries so the first thing we're gonna do is roll out our clay nice and thin, but like not too thin. So if when you pull your clay up, it rips, that's too thin. This is how my clay ended up and now we're ready to make our vase. Grab your clay and drape it over your container and then you can just adjust this to your liking. And so now I'm just going to start making little folds in the clay and try to work with your clay so that it doesn't rip. So like if the clay wants to naturally fold a certain way, just go with it. Here I'm trimming off really long pieces of clay and then after this I'm going to add in more folds but I couldn't find that footage or I think my camera just stopped recording so once you're done with any trimming or folds let this dry. This is how my vase turned out and I love it. Although with the Daz clay, it did give me like these little wrinkles, but that's okay because we can just easily sand most of that off. All right guys, so now you can paint this however you'd like and the color that I'm using looks super green on camera and I don't know why because in person it's actually like way more muted and dusty but it's like super green on camera, it's so weird. The last thing we got to do is seal this and I'm going to be using Deco Arts Triple Thick Gloss Glaze and I'm going to be using this vase for dried flowers but you could totally use actual flowers if you just put like a little cup in there with some water just make sure not to get the actual clay wet since this is air dry clay. For this tray, we're going to be making the moon, so just roll out your clay. The way I'm doing it is a little weird because I ran out of the type of clay I was using since I was finishing up a tub, so just roll out your clay normally. Trace out your shape and then fully cut it out. For this tray, I'm going to be pinching the ends to give it like a border so that whatever we put on it doesn't roll off.
taking some water on my hands, I'm gonna smooth everything out to make it nice and even. Using my needle tool, I'm just cleaning up the edges. And then once you're happy with what you've got, set it aside to dry. The next day. Here's our moon dry and now it's time to paint. I painted mine a deep peachy pink and then taking some gold on my finger, I'm just gonna smear it all around the edge borderline of the moon. Taking some more of that peachy pink, I'm just going to clean up some places where I wasn't too neat with the gold. Using a toothpick, I'm just going to start drawing on little random star designs all over the moon, and I want this to look very cluttered. So here's my design after I was finished doing everything and I loved it, but for some reason I wasn't loving the color as much as I wanted to. So I decided to repaint it with a lilac purple and then I drew on the same design I had done before. Now I'm going to seal it with that triple thick gloss glaze and we're done. We're going to be making some boho magnets and I bought these outlines on Etsy. I'll link them in the description box for you guys. Anyways, print them out to the size of your liking and then these are going to be our stencils. Roll out your clay and trace out your shapes. Blend out any rough spots with some water. If you decide to do this little face, make sure to trace it out before you lift off the paper. Using a dotting tool, I'm going to trace out the face a little bit better. Once again, don't forget to trace out any details in your stencils before you lift off the paper. And then again, I'm using a dotting tool to trace out my details. Make sure you do any last minute adjustments to any of your little shapes and then let these guys dry for about two days. Much, much, much later. So here are our little boho shapes dry and now I'm just going to sand them.
Now that they're all nice and smooth, it's time to paint. I'm going to use Deco Arch Triple Thick Gloss Glaze to seal these. I got these little magnets on Amazon a while ago and I'm going to use some E6000 to glue these onto my little shapes. You're going to want to take a really nice chunk of clay, like a good handful, and roll it into a circle. And we're going to make a little jewelry holder. You should end up with something like this, and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle at all. Now I'm going to flatten it a little bit and just try to keep it in like a circular-ish shape, but just keep flattening it out a little bit more. And if you get like some cracks on the side like me, just blend those away. I'm taking my wine bottle just to flatten it a little bit more, but I didn't make it like super thin at all. It's still probably like an inch thick. And you could keep yours in a perfectly circular shape, but I made mine just like a little bit more ovally. Now I'm taking my needle tool and I'm kind of like drawing out where I want to carve out my clay. Taking my loop tool, I'm going to start carving out my clay and I'm doing this because we're going to want to fit like little small earrings in there or a ring or like a necklace. Make sure to smooth this all out with some water. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so now I'm going to let this dry. One minute, 37 seconds later. Here's the little jewelry holder now that it's dry, and I'm going to lightly sand this. Now I'm going to paint. And of course, I wanted to speckle this, so don't forget to do the sides. The last thing we gotta do is seal this, and once again, I'm using Deco Arts Matte Varnish. All right guys, so grab your air dry clay and roll it out. The reason I'm using the little sticks on the side is to make sure that the clay is the same thickness all around. Taking a medium sized bowl, I'm gonna trace out a circle. So now I'm going to blend out the edge of my circle to make it all nice and pretty with some water. Thank you. 
using a dotting tool, I'm going to poke holes all around the rim of my circle. And you could just use anything to poke these holes, like a toothpick or the back of a paintbrush. Whatever you've got is good. And I try to make the spacing as even as possible. I'm doing this because we're going to weave raffia through these holes. Using that same bowl I used to cut out the circle, I made sure to cover it with plastic and now I'm going to place my clay inside of it so we can make a nice little bowl. Adjust it to your liking and then let this dry for a few days. Later. Okay guys, so here's how our bowl is looking now that it's dry. And now I'm going to sand it. Okay, so now the bowl's ready to paint and you can paint yours whatever color you want. I'm going to seal my bowl with some matte Mod Podge. Taking some 8mm macrame cord, I'm going to measure out enough cord to go along the rim of my bowl. And right here, I'm just gluing the edge of the macrame cord together so that these three pieces don't fall apart. And so now I'm going to take some raffia and I'm going to wrap it all along the macrame cord. And I'm using old Dollar Tree raffia pieces for this. I think it was like part of a, like a hula skirt or something. I'm going to glue my raffia onto the bowl and I wrapped too much so I just made sure to cut it to the size that I needed it to fit. Anywhere I see black macrame cord poking through, I'm just going to glue some more raffia on top of it to hide it. I'm going to take a strand of raffia and I'm just going to weave it through all of the holes.
and look how nice and pretty the raffia looks. But yeah, we're done. The first thing you're going to want to do is pick a design. I bought this line art off of Etsy because I thought it was super cute and I'm going to use this one that's circled. I'll make sure to link this for you guys down in the description box but you could also draw your own design if you wanted to or you could pick any other design that you like. I actually had to sketch mine out because I ran out of printer ink and then I drew an abstract circle around it because I wanted my trinket tray to have an abstract shape but you could just do like a regular circle or a square or whatever shape you'd like and so this is going to be our stencil. Okay so now roll out your clay. Place your stencil on top and then trace out the trinket dish shape. Also make sure to trace out whatever line art you chose. Remove your stencil and then now fully cut out your trinket dish shape. Okay, so I have no idea what this tool is called, but it came in like a nail kit that I got from Amazon, and I'm gonna use this to better trace out that line art that I chose. Before I had this tool, I used to use a toothpick or the back of a thin paintbrush, so you could use that if you don't have this. Once you're done retracing your line art, blend out any rough edges with some water. Next, I'm going to roll out a coil and then I'm going to flatten it out because this is going to be the border for our trinket tray. I'm going to add some water to the edges of my trinket tray to make it tacky and then I'm just going to attach the border. You could also add like little scratches to the border and some slip to make it easier to attach but this way always works for me. My first piece wasn't long enough to cover the whole tray so I'm just going to attach another piece to it and just blend it together using some water. Now that I'm happy with this, I'm going to let this dry for a few days. 
the next morning. All right, guys, so here's the tray dry, and now I'm just gonna lightly sand it. It's ready to paint, and you could paint yours however you'd like. I'm going to use a liner brush to paint in the line art. I didn't love the pink flowers, so I changed it to a purple. Lastly, I'm gonna seal this using Deco Art's Triple Thick Gloss Glaze, and I absolutely love this stuff. Alright guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys try out some of these projects and subscribe for more DIYs and stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!